Welcome back to Soccer Cards United. It's episode 236 of the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hello, Enzo. Hello, Jason. Um, a lot to talk about on the show today. Just wanted to tease that we will this week have some very exciting news regarding the Dublin Card Show on March 1st. Oh, here we go. The second edition of Ireland's biggest trading card show. Yeah, so 1st of March 2025, uh, back at the Convention Centre Dublin, we're having the Dublin Card Show, that's already been announced, but there will be some details coming out about how you can be there um, later on this week. So if you're not following the Dublin Card Show on Instagram, please do that now, because we don't want people missing out because they didn't know where announcements were happening and stuff like that. That's right. Follow Dublin Card Show on IG if you have IG. If you have, yeah, and if you haven't, I guess just uh, listen to the podcast, check the website daily, dublincardshow.com. Um, you know, center your life around it if you haven't uh, done that already, I would say. Definitely. Um, but anyway, moving on to the cards. Uh, UEFA Dynasty has been out for um, a week now, almost a week. Yeah. It's getting ripped. It's getting ripped. Some incredible hits are coming out of it. And um, let's have a look and see what's on what's on the old eBay, what's been going on. Um, so there was kind of an initial spate of auctions. Um, and some of those results are here um there's a jude bellingham uh two of ten nice uh, jewel patch uh jewel, jewel color, color dortmund thing uh 1600 dollars um henrik larson uh auto only 327 dollars um, okay. yeah important to say that most people that uh got these cards bought a break spot and not a bo- not a sealed box yeah definitely so because obviously you know you're thinking you you, you opened a henrik larson dynasty and you, you paid two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars for the box oh my god you've lost two thousand dollars but probably you just bought a relatively cheap henrik larson spot that's right i yeah. sold it i don't know why you would do that presumably you wanted henrik larson if you bought that spot but yeah that's a strange one could have been a random player break maybe that's right who knows? could have been anything i mean could have been celtic they were looking for kyogo yeah. you wouldn't know um mason mount there unfortunately in his in his chelsea kit uh, i heard his unfortunate stat this weekend that Joe Felix uh, was on loan at Chelsea, scored for Chelsea, went back to Atletico Madrid and then came back to Chelsea and still scored a Premier League goal before Mason Mount had scored in the meantime, which is unfortunate. He was injured. He was injured. Come on. He was injured. Come on. That's not... he. At one point, at one point, we started this podcast. That was a big Oof. hit. That was a big hit. You would have been coming Thrill. straight to us. <laughs> um, anyway, we would have been telling you, no. Um, some sealed boxes getting sold there for... I don't know. The box price. price basically doubled, yeah, pretty much from ORP. Yeah. Um, there's a bit it's of mania going on. Is it? Yeah, we haven't seen a huge, huge sale yet. Like, the biggest, like, we have seen some big listings. There's no huge sale. I've heard people whispering about one-on-one dudes, people offering 20K, which is crazy, but that seems to be the case. So it's like, there's a lot of pandemonium still going on. Absolutely. Around, around these cards. And I think only time will tell where these kind of fall in the grand scheme of modern soccer cards. Because they are definitely, there is a premium vibe to it. There is this kind of, I don't know, the market is enjoying. Absolutely. Look, there's a, there's a one-on-one uh, Lampard Gerrard. Um, the England ma- successive wow. England managers couldn't get them into the same midfield, but Tops could get them onto the same card. Um, Looking and slick. That's at $2,400 with six days left. So that's very slick. Um. Yeah, all sorts of prices. Fascinating that like a lot of these went straight to auction as opposed to the classic buy now. I know there is a mix, but um, yeah, you can only uh, wait. Yeah, well, thirty five hundred, twelve grand asking price on the one on one Harry Kane uh, star ball logo man. As they call it. Yeah, I don't know, Jason. To be honest, it's it's that thing of like you don't really know. We don't know. We don't know. Time will tell. There's there's a messy as well, Genie. Oh, but um, yeah, they're twenty five thousand asking price. Seventy five thousand asking thing. price for the Vinny Junior one on one here. Yeah, that that's seems like high an to me. American ask, you know, that's like a American sport. I mean, I don't know. Basically, they've become kind of some of the, the most high end, most sought after to a degree cards of players. But it depends. Yeah. it's obviously dynasty mania at the moment. Where will they fall? And only time will tell. But at the moment, it does feel like everyone's having fun. People are buying at the breaks. They're having a good time. There's big hits coming out. There's amazing cards coming out of every break. Because each, you know, especially the patches, you know, the non the non patches, I don't really care for. But all of the patch autos are, you know, extremely cool cards of players. Like you can't, absolutely. Um, obviously, Messi is kind of who everyone's chasing. But a couple of nice Messi's hit, uh, golden goal with a PSG Messi four or five there. 
um, quite nice. And then the big one we saw was over at Soccer Breakers. They hit this one on one Messi uh, Barcelona card. Beautiful. Um, that is absolutely massive. That's you know, like, a, one of the product hits. I would say. I was yeah. I was saying to you that I I was looking around at breaks and stuff, and I seen backyard breaks. The infamous backyard breaks mm. were, were ripping dynasty. Yeah, soccer dynasty, and it was that thing of like this has crossover appeal. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they've created a set that kind of everyone wants to be opening. Yeah, they were saying at the time they thought a one on one Messi star ball. Yeah, could be a hundred thousand dollar card, and that's like again. They're also extravagant. They're the ones breaking. Of course, they would say that, that sort of thing. But it's like, there is this kind of unknown, I suppose, of like, what what are these cards? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is what is a Messi 101 Dynasty worth? On card, game used, patch auto. What is that worth? Like, is that what goes yeah. on kind of thing? So I know there's a lot of unknown out there. Out it's funny how just on the, on the backyard breaks thing, because um, obviously F- Fanatics have put this in the hands of, of various breakers. I mean, I was on Sports Card Nonsense a few months ago and, and Mike was saying to me on that that he was going to be getting some UEFA dynasty and that maybe I'd come on and break it with him or whatever um, which never happened but the point is that he's not a soccer breaker mm. um, and neither a backyard so it, it is that kind of thing of that was a it, it is a product that Fanatics know the high end has crossover appeal people love high end stuff and are more likely to go in on sports they're not familiar with if there's a chance of a hundred thousand dollar hit exactly. or something 100%. Um, but it's funny how they they mentioned the backyard mentioned the star ball you know, almost as if they'd been briefed. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, because the, the reaction to the Starball thing in the soccer community was one of kind of like eyebrows raised kind of skepticism. Um, but obviously these guys had been briefed and didn't know enough to no, like, go in off fairness, I'll say this. When, when they were opening the boxes, they knew all the players. They they pronounced like, There was one guy there and pronounced all... Like, I mean, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure both of them were pronouncing all the names right. They knew, they knew the vibe of it, right? I, I'm not saying like, they don't know anything about no, no, soccer. No, no, no. I'm just saying... What I'm saying the idea, it was almost like the very idea that there was a soccer version of a Logo Man was like, oh, we can map this across. Logo Man's Yes, matters. exactly. Yeah. Star Ball matters. It was kind of this weird thing where it's almost like putting a rookie card or a first Bowman on it. And it's like, now this is in line with the hobby kind of thing. But so they were saying like, they were thinking of Messi, Logo Man, quote unquote, Star Ball, which they called the Crystal Ball. So they, they weren't fully up to date, Jason. They, they called call it a Crystal, crystal ball. ball. Okay. It does look like a bit of a Crystal Ball. But um, they hit basically, they, they hit a quote unquote Crystal Ball which had the number five on it to represent five Champions League win, which was really cool to have that part of the ball. But it was a Lewandowski for Barcelona, so obviously Barcelona won the Champions League five times. But it, was a, it wasn't it was numbered to 101. So I'm not familiar, familiar, familiar with Logo Man, because that's, again, that's the other, but I'm pretty sure they're, they should be one of ones, right? Obviously, the was Star it, Ball... Was it, was it the Star Ball, or was it the, the Champions League winner's patch? Well, I thought the winner's patch... No, it's two different crests. Everyone, the star everyone wears this, oh, replaces the star ball. Well, it, there used to be like the Champions League logo with a five on it, didn't there? Like that used to be. Yeah, the, yeah, it's it's the Champions League itself. That yeah, but the that's trophy. not. It wasn't that. It was a star ball with a five. Oh, it was a star I think ball could be the new. Five. It was confusing. It could have confused part of the kit. I don't really know, but basically, it wasn't a one on one, so that was like a weird thing. Because if you want to make the star ball a logo man, it should probably only be one on one. Yeah, 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 mm. for sure. Um. I, I don't know. I think obviously what you're saying is bang on in that you, you need to map things across. We've seen that all the time. Whenever whenever things are mapped across, that's why like, um, that's why Jason. Panini, huh? I'm about to share my screen. Okay. Because I've gone and searched for the hell it would have been. So tell me when that's shared. I will. I'll just quickly say this uh, thing. Yeah. Um, so one of the reasons why Panini and Tops are so eager to uh, ignore each other's rookie designations is that they're trying to communicate beyond just the soccer hobby and it's important for people who break other sports but also break soccer to see something like a rookie logo as often as possible so that they can map it on that's all i was going to say here we go enzo is showing us this bada bing bada boom there you oh go my word i have so never was, seen that before in my life yeah i think it used to be champions league logo and then they changed it to that so that's i don't think the other arm has a patch as well. I think that becomes... Oh. You have your Champions League patch with the number on it. So that's what... Now, the thing is, the Champions League patch, I'm pretty sure, doesn't fit on a card as a full circle, full ball. Yeah. And um, that's why we're seeing kind of a half crescent ball and stuff like that. So, like, because it's a half crescent ball, I can kind of understand that they probably used, you know, used the star ball to make to make two or three or four cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if, it, if you want it to be Logo Man, I feel like you have to not do that. <laughs> that's my, my opinion. <laughs> Because, I mean, I don't know, maybe good. there is one of five Logo Mans, and it's, like, part of the Logo Man. I, don't, I, don't, I thought they were all... If there is, they didn't get hyped. That's all I'll say. 
Okay. So in general, my my opinion is people with the money to have fun with Dynasty are having fun with Dynasty. Yeah. And maybe some people have overextended themselves as well, hopefully not. But in general, it's been positive, I think. That's my kind of take. And here's here's Backyard who, you know, not just everyone has various issues with Backyard, except for the 150,000 people that follow them on Instagram and the thousands of people that break with them. Um, but there's but like a, it, it is good to have this kind of thing. That this uh, Jamal Musiala, for instance, patch auto one one on right backyard's on. main page, and for them to be sharing videos where they're excited to be hitting soccer cards, soccer cards. That's important, definitely. Um, and it's 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 always that thing of if you want to grow the soccer hobby or if you want to grow anything, the more you grow, the kind of the control you lose that bit of control. But see the way they went crazy for Musiala. Like they knew who he was, if you know what I mean. Which, like, I don't mean to disrespect them, but it's like you wouldn't necessarily know that they'd be up to date on soccer, if you know what I mean. But you also wouldn't necessarily be going. I think there's a lot of soccer people who follow soccer very closely who, at this point, wouldn't necessarily be having that kind of out of the chair Musiala reaction. True, because they've seen a lot of him. Um, maybe so just the I, Germans will be doing that. I think so. Like, Musiala's uh, class, though. What a player? No, I know he is. I'm not saying he's not. But what I'm saying is. Like, for me, I'm there kind of... My instant reaction is like, well, Musiala, okay, we've all kind of... We all you know, like we've him. all kind of seen Musiala. We're all kind of with it. Um, and because it's like, you say, oh, I want to grow the soccer hobby. You want to, you know, get other people involved. But then when they get involved, you kind of want to get you that instinct to kind of gatekeep a little bit and kind of be like, well, no, <laughs> but don't... That. like Enjoy what I enjoy, but don't enjoy it like that. Enjoy it the way I enjoy it. That's right. Well, I think but that's a different... That's a different conversation. That's a different conversation, but that's just uh so anyway, there's my take is I feel dynasty. like yeah, I feel like the market is is gone well. Obviously the prices went crazy, people are are selling them for high, high prices, the breaks are are going for high prices, but people are clearly happy enough to take a punt, get involved and see what comes out of the boxes and ultimately release some incredible cards onto the soccer market that we did have this kind of fear of will they impact everything below them. Mm-hmm. But at the moment it feels like they have their own little niche, their own little road. You would like to imagine a lot of these cards will end up in collections as opposed to always being available on the on the free market. Yeah. Um for now, I would say, you know, one week on, it's only been a week. It's been positive. I think it's been positive as well. I haven't yeah. seen that much that much negativity about it. Because ultimately oh. the, a lot of the cards that are coming out look really good. And that is That's people right. will tolerate basically anything. You know, uh you kind of ha- we have all these like ideas pre-release or all these notions pre-release, but then if consistently cool cards are coming out with the boxes. You kind of go, ah, you know, that's deadly. Yeah, that is cool. That's pretty good. Because talk to a bunch of F1 collectors about F1 Dynasty. They bring up the same six cards in conversation every time. They just talk about team principles and, you know, all that sort of malarkey. Um, Yeah, but they get excited about, like, you know, your flag patches, your zipper, oh, yeah. whatever. Like, it's not, they don't let the fact that the, a lot of the checklist is, you know, sort of rubbish. That's right. it impact their enjoyment of the big hits. And that's what we're seeing in soccer, the exact same thing. I will hey. say... You pointed out this card to me, Enzo, this uh, one-on-one yeah. inscription, Fernando Torres. To be nitpicky, okay. I don't love the way this T is covered here, but on the auto-only cards, there's this line here, which covers yeah. some Fair of the name. name. Oh, come I on, just, that's uh, very, that's I'm very saying, nitpicky. I'm saying to be absolutely nitpicky, I've seen it on other, obviously, auto-only Yeah, but the T is perfectly fine there on the left. Like, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. I'm just saying, I, I just wish we could just move that up a little bit and not not cover it. Okay, because um, that is not there. I don't think in the in the patch. What well, is? But you don't. There's no name. Oh, okay, I don't mind it at all. But whatever. But the um, I was gonna say there, there's a there's a Stephen Gerrard 101 non patch going out. Is is it there? No, there's a Stephen Gerrard 101 non patch out there. I don't know if you've seen it, Jason. Where it was signed in gold ink. I did see that. That was very cool. Really, really nice. Would have been cool, and we haven't seen enough to know. But it would have been cool if there was more of that. Like a couple of like if if the 101 non patches were all signed in gold ink, I think that would have been a good touch. Do you know what I mean? Yes. That clearly yes. isn't the case. So who, who knows? Obviously, it literally could just be as simple as he picked up that pen and it is what it is. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely some little Easter eggs in there and some cool bits in there. There you go. Look at that. Brilliant. One thing I'm learning from this uh, little overview is that soccer breakers are getting through a lot of this stuff. <laughs> um, but that looks um, that looks unbelievable. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, this does this uh, image choice of Stephen Jared reminds you a little bit of that meme, you know, where he takes a selfie after his run. You know that meme of <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Jared? Sort of a strange late era Gerard choice, um, but right. again, not for me to criticize. Really, um, there you go. It's been a bit of fun, so that's a good little update, I think, on Dynasty Soccer. I think it has so far done what it needed to do. 
I think it's been a success definitely for Tops and Fanatics. I think the market likes it. The breakers, I think, are having a good time of it. I think people have yeah. Um, and people have generally been like, you know, that kind of stratification has happened where like, you know, people who are breaking it are breaking it. The rest of us are kind of sitting there going, I don't know how you're breaking that, you know. Um, but that's grand. That's what's supposed to happen. Yeah, class. Um, so all all good uh, when it comes to when it comes to Dynasty. Full steam ahead. Um, and I think this uh this release of Dynasty will encourage uh tops um to keep going on this high end sort of train. I think so. Um I don't think there's been any kind of pushback to the point where they would be like, I don't but know if soccer's ready for more of these. It's like it's annoying. It's annoying that the fact if they were to keep going, that would negatively impact it. That's the kind of the catch twenty two. I know. Yeah. Where it's like, how do you have the kind of how do you have the self preservation to just let this sit for five years, for example? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't or sit as it is. Like, say, for example, they do the next rendition of Dynasty, but leave out legends. You don't leave yeah. out the legends that already have one. Like, that's the type of, and then obviously everyone's complaining, oh, there's no Ronaldinho. And like, there's, you can't win, but it's yeah. like there is a way to produce the cards to a point where you've killed it all. But uh, that's not, that's, that's not, that's above our pay grade, I would say. Yeah, that's above our pay grade, certainly. That's, that's tomorrow's problem. That's right. Um, right. Let me have a look here. I want to show you some information about Select, the FIFA Select coming out twenty three, twenty four. FIFA Select. Okay. And um, we're still in the in the midst of twenty three, twenty four uh, <sighs> releases, even though the twenty four, twenty five season has we well and truly started. That's right. Um, but here we are. So this is from from GTS, but that's information about it. Uh, twenty three, twenty four. Panini Select FIFA Soccer Cards checklist is out. The vibrant and popular Select FIFA returns twenty three, twenty four with a spectacular two hundred and fifty card base set featuring three distinct levels: terrace, mezzanine, and field level, as well as a curl colorful, colorful array of parallels. Scheduled to release on Wednesday, September fourth, twenty twenty four. While the international format, this is the hobby international that we've seen from uh, Panini this season, is scheduled to release on Friday, September thirteenth. Uh, one box delivers three autographs or memorabilia cards plus seven inserts or insert parallels, 14 parallels, including five numbered in every hobby box. And International has one autograph and five inserts or insert parallels, eight parallels, including three numbered. Uh, stunning autograph memorabilia cards are the biggest FIFA stars and select signatures and pitch side signatures and autograph memorabilia. Uh, super rare gems such as stained glass, artistic impressions and visionary. One per case, there's your case hits. Everyone knows that about uh, Select. Uh, parallels, multicolor, camo, tie dye, zebra, black and many more. Peacock is exclusive to uh, Hobby International. And this is a mix, like Don Ross, of uh, club and international, yeah. unlike uh, the last FIFA Select, which was all international. Was it all international, the last I one? believe it was all international kits, yeah. Maybe that's not... Double-check that? I will, I'm not going to double-check it now, but I'm, I don't know. I feel okay. like FIFA was always a mix. It could have been. I, I Maybe I misremember. Anyway... There's Christian Pulisic with a, pa- a patch auto. Uh, Lina Messi uh, with a, a stained glass. I feel like, you know, when they had originally, there was the stained glass and then Tops came out with uh, Renaissance in Merlin Chrome, which is the same insert. Yeah. Um, I feel like these two designs are, are slowly, like... Uh, becoming more similar. Converging. They're becoming more similar as time goes by. I think it's kind of ridiculous how Renaissance was existed on the back of this stained glass. Like, uh, I don't know how that's not... IP infringement of some sort. But this stained glass looks more like Renaissance now than stained glass did when yes. Renaissance. It's very strange. It's like... I love the little soccer balls. People hated that this year, but I thought they looked great. I think it looks fun. It, it definitely looks more topsy, I would say. Okay. Um, There's a visionary. That never took off. Um, That also doesn't really look like Martin Odegaard, but I'm assured that it is. <laughs> he looks a bit sick. He looks, he looks ill, yeah. What's happened to Martin Odegaard? Um, do betting and artistic impressions. That never took off, although it's a nice, it is nice imagery. But. It's a good image, yeah. Um, uh, but as somebody pointed out to me, this uh, artistic impressions thing may be eventually nostalgic for somebody, you know. Um, it could be like how a beam team is or something like that for basketball collectors. For me, it's a reach. It's a reach. But maybe, you know, if you're a little, if you're a little kid... That to me that looks like the artistic impressions. That looks to me like Panini's kind of take on a Simplicidad kind of an image vibe. That's that's what mm. I kind of get there. Yeah. Um, I think it's strange to have one called artistic impressions, but it's a photograph. Surely artistic impressions would be an artist's 
impression of I think that like the stained glass is creme de la creme out of select they really need to improve the other cases absolutely completely agree they would make the whole thing a lot better yeah uh, Zebra is back uh, this is a purple I guess uh, Mbappe um, yeah and Mbappe Gavi uh, Dusan Vlaivich with a jumbo swatch I believe and there it is the mini man rookie for Spain tie dye parallel. Yeah. Tops have opted to not put rookie logos on international kits. So when Eurochrome comes out, Le Mini Mal will be in a Spanish kit and will be licensed, but will have a national debut instead of a rookie card, we are led to believe, which I yeah. think is a dropping of the ball. Um so Panini are kind of coming in here and getting to master and I suppose take advantage of the fact that they can put Le Mini Mal in a rookie logo card with a with a with a with a Spanish kit. Jason, I think these are going to be highly sought after. Right. Um, I suppose Topps' uh, main defense against that would be that they have the UEFA license so they can put Euro uh, 2024, which is the competition you won. won. But then if you're not putting the rookie logo, like they should have had a rookie logo at the front and on the back of the card have a little thing saying national debut. A double designation. Double designation. Because they probably thought we can't put double designation on the front of the same card. But yeah, don't. Put the other one on the back. Same way you'd see Refractor. Mm. But instead of Refractor, it'll say national debut. On the front, you still have your rookie card, and you're, you're getting what would have been one of the coolest cards made. But uh, that's a strange decision. Oh, they overthought it, I would say. Right. Um, well, they probably just thought, like, in a couple of years, Panini would be gone, and we can do what we like. That's right. There won't be an alternative. Um, so You've got to get into that. Uh, no, for now, that's, that's a, a sick, sick card. Although, was he number 15 in the Euros? Like, don't... I don't remember. Because that it doesn't really matter, but it kind of, you know... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unlikely, given how... Young he is that he's kept the same squad number. You know, that's what I mean. I can't yeah. remember. I feel like he definitely wasn't 15. Um, and then internationally, you got your, your Peacock there. Um, it's just all Peacocks here. That's a that's a white, I guess. That's a white. Uh, oh, it's a base. No, that's a base terrace. Is it? But that's the base design. Yeah. That's a problem with white, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and there's a pitch side signatures of Gavi as well. I have just, if we want to have a look, some of the checklist uh, here. I broke it all out because I cannot read checklists as they're usually published. Um, so we have team badges. Uh, we have the Korean teams of uh, John Book Motors and Pohang Steelers coming back as they were in uh, Donruss. We have Palmeiras coming back at River Plate coming back as they were in Donruss as well. Um, obviously, there are more teams than there are um, team uh, badges. Uh, but Eintracht Frankfurt, Porto, Benfica, they get club ones, so did the, the South American teams, the Korean teams, uh, one for the men's and one for the women's team badges. Right. Uh, Argentina, England, France, Germany, Italy, Mexico, Norway, Portugal, and Spain. Um, stained glass insert, big uh, checklist here, including legends, uh, legends like uh, Andrei Shevchenko, uh, Miroslav Klose, Lothar Mateo, uh, Mateus, uh, Dennis Bergkamp, Kaká, um, and then Messi, Ronaldo, Harry Kane, Mbappe, Bellingham, Haaland, Vinny Jr., Musiala, Bukayo Saka. Um, and then, yeah, Diego Maradona, Thierry Henry, Zidane. So actually it's just, uh, is it just these guys? 10 current players and then, I don't know, 11 current players. And then Legends uh, for yeah. staying last. Uh, Unstoppable, we don't really like. Uh, Visionary, we're not really big on. Artistic Impressions, we're not really big on. Um, let's see who has... Uh, the Mini Mal was uh, number 19, just for, for the record, oh, during the Euros. Okay. And... Um, right, so that says FIFA on it, and it has the wrong number to do. So Tops will, will will definitely hark on that, I would say. Well, you you know, you could argue... Uh, because Tops are messing up the rookie logo on that one, you could argue seeing an image of him with a 15 kit, and it's obviously clearly pre-Euros, is that even more mm. of a rookie card? Is that even more rookie than the, than the right. Tops one? Yeah. This is before he went to the tournament and lit it up. There you go. Yes. I suppose we don't really, nobody really knows what... Time will tell. Time will tell, yeah. Um, auto memorabilia from all sorts of players. Um, obviously, Premiers are in here, so there should be some Endrick rookies uh, somewhere on the checklist. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is the last... in there. Uh, oh, yes. I feel like this is one of the last kind of runs where they can stick more Endrick rookies in, who yeah. obviously scored on his debut, so it'd be a good time to have an Endrick in here. Absolutely. Uh, Yamal uh, patch autographs. Um, all sorts of stuff. 
there. Select, I don't know, it always has loads of hits, but then obviously not all the hits are, you know, big hits. You just get a lot of um, patches and autographs. That's right. Uh, yeah. Rodri has a has a swatch in here. I, I was just thinking, if you're a Rodri collector, you'd be spoiled for choice. He's in every product. He has patches, autographs. Um, Dusan Vlajevic, I know some uh, some Juventus fans were complaining recently that Dusan Vlajevic is always used in tops marketing, but it's never in there for Juventus. Mm. Um, so that's something to uh, to, uh, to to rectify. Um, pitch side signatures, select signatures, just signatures. Um, and you can have all sorts of signatures in here from all sorts of teams all over the world. Enzo, FIFA Select, excited about it? Yes, definitely. Very much so. I'm going to try to get us an answer on whether or not uh, the last one had... Uh, I just had a look and I couldn't find it. I think you're going to need a checklist to discover such a thing. So I was on eBay trying to find... And all I've seen was international. I can't lie. I think it is only international. I didn't cop that last year then. Um, yes, if we could if we could roll the tape back and find that um, podcast. That's right. Uh, it's all, yeah, it was all international. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking here Pretty. on the old cardboard connection. Well, then yeah. you'd imagine the likes of Endrick changes the rule. When, when Endrick pops out and you can't throw him in. Well, you probably could for Brazil, surely. But I don't, they never really do that with the... The FIFA license makes no sense. Put it that way. Put it that way. There's no logic to it. There's no logic to it. Um, you just kind of go where they tell you to go on the FIFA license. Yeah. I, for one, I like it, though. I like mixing them all, doing a weird mix mix and match. And you just kind of... Are you hitting a Man City card? Are you hitting an Argentina card? You'll never know. And that's You'll never know. Very exciting. So that's uh, uh, Panini FIFA Select, one to watch out for in early September. Yeah. And it seems like there's not a lot happening early September. We, we've had such a flurry of releases recently. So it might... Breathe on its own, which is a rare thing in this day and age. Mm. Um, let's have a look at some news from Sports Collectors Daily. Oh, um, oh. This is a story written not by Rich Mueller, but by his colleague, his esteemed colleague, Bob D'Angelo. Um, and this is uh, news from Fanatics Land. Uh, oh. CGC cards will have a presence inside Fanatics Collect offices, uh, offer faster card grading. A new collaboration between Fanatics Collect, which is the uh, auction house formerly known as PWCC, um, and CGC Cards is aiming to create the hobby's fastest turnaround times for grading. Beginning September 16th, CGC Cards is establishing a full-time authentication and grading operation at Fanatics Collect facility in uh, Tigard, Oregon. Uh, the service will be available to any Fanatics Collect user who submits raw cards for grading and sale in a weekly or premium auction or in the Buy Now Marketplace or Vaulting, $9 per card, regardless of the card's market value. Very good. Now that's a... That's a, a direct hit, I would say, on, on PSA, who will upcharge you to high heaven. That's right. Um, the two companies also plan to launch an authentication-only service together, providing expert review and verification of a card's authenticity. The two companies said their service will offer a lower-priced alternative to encapsulation and numerical grading. Da, 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 da. It's own, CGC Cards owned by Certified Collectors Group and has certified more than 6 million sports and non-sports cards since July 2020. Here's Nick Bell, Finance Collect CEO. We want to give collectors the best possible experience and we're delighted to partner with CGC Cards and have their team establish a full-time on-site operation with us in Oregon. This partnership will enable our companies to provide the smoothest, most convenient and quickest grading experience in the industry. Um, I have to say, Enzo, based on the their presence at Fanatics Fest, yeah. and now this news, it seems like the, the Fanatics takeover of CGC is... Uh, yeah, if, there's a, if there's any grading company that Fanatics were to buy right now, in the uh, you know, its betting has been suspended, I would say, yeah. on it being CGC. Although, the fact that this isn't hasn't been kind of verbalized as an actual legitimate takeover could be maybe Fanatics... Like, like uh, what I'm saying is, I think Fanatics probably do quote, unquote, own CGC, or at the very least, they have like a very strategic partnership or contract signed, but they don't necessarily... I think... I have a feeling Fanatics don't want to announce we now own a grading company. I think this is the way that they want to do it. They want to... They're, right. they're inside our offices. They're not us, but we're partnering kind of, but not really, not yeah. officially. It's not a monopoly, I promise. Because I do think... I was, I was just talking about the industry to someone I knew uh, vaguely, and I was like, oh, so this happened, this happened. And they were like, that's a monopoly. And I was like, no, 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 it's not. It's not a monopoly. No, 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 no. Michael Rupert told me it's not. So... It's like when you talk to somebody who's not in the industry, it's like that definitely sounds like a, a full yes. loop, a, a closed circle. Um, if, it, if, it, if it waddles like a monopoly and quacks like a monopoly, it's probably a monopoly. Probably is, yeah, definitely. Um, but I think, see, uh, for people who don't know, um, CGC have not been grading cards that long. 
Um, we covered, I remember, I remember the day they came into the card grading uh, game. Right. They used to be coins on comic people. Yes. So they do coins, they do notes, they do comics, they do uh, video games, stamps, and then they came into cards. They have a whole uh, group of companies. And I think uh, Fanatics have rightly identified this as CGC only being one of certified collectors, collectibles groups, companies, and therefore... You could cash them out, take it off their hands, and they go. They could keep doing what they do best, which is their coins and their comics. But they got a big stash of cash in the bank because they sold CGC to Fanatics. Yeah, I think having under ten dollar grading, having it obviously be that fast, and having it not have an upcharge is mm. it's it, that's a classic Fanatic. Like CGC didn't make that decision. That was Fanatics going. How do we make it better? How do we yep. just kill other people? And that is how, and like and how do you make it better for collectors? And that is true. Because like I was only talking to someone yesterday saying that if PSA start doing like a, a special that's under ten dollars, I'd start grading a lot of these parallels that I kind of have here. Yeah. Um, from finest flashbacks, Jason. Right. Because they're beautiful. They're number ninety nine or less. So it's like if the grading was cheap enough, I could grade these, and it'd actually be really really nice cards. So to grade yeah. it and Im- immediately vault it and or run an auction on it when you're only adding nine dollars onto it, you could probably there's definitely a move to be made there. I would say. Absolutely. Absolutely, but I do think um, I don't. I don't know if we're going to see an actual full-on announced takeover. I think the fact that CGC are operating inside the Fanatics Collect building, yeah, uh, that's 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 the announcement. Right, but they're think? still two separate companies at the moment. Yes, but I think it might. I think it's best for it to be like that, probably. Right. Um. I'll I'll go on record and predict that I think in the next. 18 months, um, CCG will announce the sale of CGC to Fanatics. Do you think they would alter the name and the holder or anything like that? Yes. Yeah. I think it'll be called Fanatics Grading. Because <laughs> everything's called Fanatics something. Yeah, well, you couldn't call it. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't do that. I think you just can because it is that thing of, like, you cannot manufacture a card and then tell me what the condition is and charge me to tell me what the condition is. You can't. Because then, like, if it's a six, it's like, right, why is it a six? You created it. Yeah, fix, fix it, make it a ten. Right yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, I think, but I think, I think, but that's why I feel like they're like they own, they will own CGC, but I don't think it'll necessarily be. I think it'll be more so a written agreement that profits are cut up this way, which is essentially ownership, but without the actual takeover and alteration. Be, they they might buy a stake in CGC, something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know if it'll necessarily be like or they might just pay them loads of money for their to provide their services. Maybe, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows. I think um, Fanatics grading, Fanatics sports authentication or something of that likes isn't there. Uh, what's that? F- FSA? FSA? I don't think that can happen. I think it just is way too messy. I think like... Don't think there's it's too much... FTC, uh, uh, the Federal Trade Commission might have a problem with that. Yeah, I just if don't... I think, yeah, I think it's a step too far. I would really do. But I just... I, I'll, I, I'll, no, by the way, I also think it's a step too far. But I think if you are a Fanatics, you're looking you at... You just do it. You take that step. You've done everything... You bought PWCC, point. you've done that. You've It went well, it's going well. You do uh, Fanatics Fest, Fanatics events are going well, you do that, great. Why would you not think? Like, it's... You know, I have something to say, but I, I think if I said it, we'd have to, you'd have to edit, so I won't do okay. it. Okay, right, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there for now. <laughs> but uh, we'll see um, what happens. We'll, we'll, but it, it, when we went to Fanatics Fest, they had such a central location, PSA were off into the corner. No, And no, that was yeah. the first sign of it, obviously. That was very purposefully done, which yeah. we pointed out, I think, on the Fanatics uh, recap episode, the Fanatics Fest recap episode. So yeah, yeah, we expect that to happen. I'm just saying, my prediction is it might be more of a verbal partnership or you know written partnership mm. as opposed to something that like the commissions could see as we've bought a stake in the company. I think it's more of a you're in house. Here's how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to cut this up. This is where the profit's going to go. Yeah. You're going to pay us to be in house. But that's actually that payment is actually the money we would have made if we owned you and we're grading ourselves. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I and I'm I'm making the. You're saying it's going to be on record, official. It's going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be Michael Rubin sharing a Bloomberg article saying Fanatics Collect have acquired CGC grade. Yeah, because I, I I don't think like that would be in line with everything else that has happened. To be fair, yeah, I, I, I think, think what you're suggesting is kind of the 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 clever way to do it. But I think if you're a Fanatics at this point, why be clever? You're already you're winning. You know. But here's one, right? So, like, you set up Fanatics Live, which competes with whatnot, TikTok Shop, and the like. I forgot about right? Fanatics Live. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. There's more. There's more. I won't even remind you of the yeah. rest of it. <laughs> uh, the card shows themselves. Um, so, you set up Fanatics Live to compete with whatnot. Cool. Yeah. You buy tops to compete with Panini and to, you know, buy all the licenses. Cool. Yeah. 
you're setting up Fanatics Fest to compete with other card shows and you're setting up all your different card shows to compete with them and you know have that. That's cool. Do you think and Anna, you're successfully doing all of that at this moment of time, by the way. Yeah. Um going I'm pretty well. sure they're they're yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gaining a lot on whatnot and whatever. And I think, you know, having that supply of products will only help them, at least in the sports realm moving forward. However, can they take down the almost indestructible brand name of PSA, if you know what I mean? Mm. They, they say, look, it's $9 grading, and we're not going to do an upcharge. And it's like, yeah, but if I send my Mickey Mantle to PSA, I can get $7 million for her for some reason. Mm. Like, can, can they disrupt that? And I suppose, you look at that Pele, I don't know if you have it on hand, Jason. If you look at that Pele uh, dynasty that we just bought, by the way, Yeah. if you didn't see that on Instagram, at the time of grading that, Beckett was probably the only show in town. They were the big boys. So absolutely, the, the idea that PSA cannot fall from this rise is incorrect, yes. I suppose. So we, we can only wait with bated breath and see what's going to happen next. Mm. Again, absolutely. this is all above our pay, pay grade, Jason. I don't know nothing about none. Me neither, but it's, it's interesting stuff. That's right. Um, there are there are forces at play here stronger than us all. And we must just keep an eye and see what happens. I think, I think Jason, honestly, I think if they're going to acquire CGC, yeah. I, have two, two, I have two things on that. If they're going to acquire it, it's crazy that the first press release is like, are they going to come in-house? We're going to do this little friendly thing. Yeah. Because that's almost like you've taken the steam out of the acquisition. But could this be like a Fanatics trial run of, let's see how this goes for a few months? Because could purchasing CGC and its numbers not looking great be the first quote-unquote failure of what they're doing? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, again, you can make an amazing event and that can be... You, with enough money and enough connections, you can mm. make that a success. With enough money and connections, you can't necessarily make a grading company a success. It's a bit different. Yes. Yeah. So could it be, let's trial this before we... Because grading companies are, they operate on, on long-standing reputations and long-standing... It's just a completely different... Record. It's so yeah. bizarre. Like, it, it's, there's not even necessarily logic to it. There's not logic to why BG, yeah. BGS is so bad at the moment or whatever. There's no real logic. So... It could be kind of a safe play of let's do this first. And if we hit this type of a mark, we're going to acquire you. If we don't, we're going to leave grading out of it because that is like a different beast altogether because yeah. the natural business logics don't necessarily apply to grading. Hmm. That's right. There you go. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens um, in, in there. In the meantime, let's go over to Fanatics Collect. Oh, yeah. Um. Which is which is one uh, where you can now you know vault your vault your cards and get them sent to to CGC uh, soon enough, and um, but these are all PSA slabs that I want to look at, um, and this is exactly what you're talking about, Enzo, is that you go on to Fanatics Collect and all the big cards you want to look at are graded with PSA. That that is, I mean, I mean, I think that is definitely something to be addressed if you have Fanatics. That is a that is a vertical that you cannot yeah. tolerate being out of house. Yeah, but it's tough. Because it's, it's, it's not logic to it. You know what I mean? It's like you have to fork out however many bajillions yeah. um, it would cost to buy PSA. I don't think you're able to... Um, I don't. You, just, you can't just create a rival and then beat them, I don't think. I That's don't what know. it feels. Yeah, you know, I know, I know. The, the yeah. COVID era, I just think it's been... They've been yeah. too strong. But let's, but let, like, let's just... And I know we are... like This is not... I'm, I want to talk about these soccer cards, but just let's play it out, right? In my in my scenario, you go and you buy, you give CCG a check to buy CSG, yeah. Um, and now you have your grading company. You rebrand it as Fanatics Grading, right? And you do what you did to Panini. You go Maybe into just, PSA, just, just and you take FG. all the staff. Just FG, FG, the first, the first one, ever, the the first two. ever two letter. That's right, FG. Yeah, grading Grade made FG. simple. FG, you cross out the third letter. <laughs> It's cleaner. Um, like and uh, I don't think you can yeah. buy PSA staff. I mean, the only thing you could do, if you well, bought you all the PSA you staff, it would slow buy... them down. That's the only thing. It wouldn't like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you do what you did to Penny. Yeah. You go in, you take all their, their senior executives, and then what are they going to do? You've crippled them. That's you, buy all the, you buy all their graders, you transfer all their graders out of them and into you, mm-hmm. and it's done. Wow. You got to be absolutely <laughs> ruthless with these things. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, look, let's look at some wonderful soccer cards here. Yeah, they look good. They do look good, don't they? Um, some big sales here on uh, August 22nd in the uh, latest Fanatics Connect uh, Premier Auction. And Messi dominating proceedings once again. Let's just start off, though, with this Cristiano Ronaldo. Can who, I say, I could, um, have sworn, I could have sworn that Ronaldo was sold previously as a PSA 6. And I think potentially... I'm going to try to find it. You, you chat about right. that. I'm going to try and find okay. it. Okay. 
This is the 2022 uh, Prism World Cup uh, Qatar Ronaldo uh, Black Prism one of one sold for thirty thousand dollars or thirty thousand three hundred dollars with buyer's premium. Uh, it is a PSA five, um, which is very much in uh, why did you grade it territory. Uh, it I would was say. not not why did you grade it? Why did you crack it? It was a BGS six point five, previously wow. sold for thirty five thousand dollars. The subgrade centering ten edges ten. Surface nine, corner six. So there's something wrong with a corner. A corner is dinged. Few, yeah, there's a ding on these corners. I can't really see. Neither can I uh, from here. Ding. But, there's uh, definitely a bit of whitening. But anyway, used to be a 6.5. They cracked the center to the PSA. And even though they got a five, they pretty much got the same amount of money for it. So. Um, well, they lost 5,000, didn't they? Yeah. Well, they lost more than that just for the time and effort. But yeah. And probably the. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. PSA could have upcharged as well, which would have been funny to. No. But this is um in a in a week when I believe Cristiano Ronaldo launched a YouTube channel and yeah. that became a very big deal very quickly. That's right. Um so I suppose here's my now let me just put us in full screen so I can get this on a clip, Enzo. Do you think Cristiano's new YouTube channel is going to affect his card prices? Positively or negatively, or just at all? <laughs> <laughs> Ask that answer. At, at all, at all, at all. Um Potentially, I don't know. Like, if you're Cristiano Ronaldo, if you if you're Cristiano Ronaldo, you have to ask yourself, or if you're yeah. if you're a friend of Cristiano Ronaldo, you have to ask yourself why yeah. are you you're George Mendes? Like, yeah. obviously, there's one eye on retirement. You could say, but it's like I suppose the the closest thing to this is the LeBron the shop thing, isn't it? Like, why would a superstar be creating content like this? Mm. You know, spend time with your family. Yeah, that's that's my initial reaction. Um. But, but obviously, the family, like, are, the family are involved in the YouTube channel. Yeah, because yeah. I think they're all there together in Saudi Arabia. There's nothing Having to a bit do. Of crack. That's right. They're in this Don't compound. On record. There's nothing to do because they're so famous, and going outside could be hazardous for them because they'll be stopped for photos all the time. That's right. That's not what I meant. Well, that's what I'll say on the record. Okay. Um, no, no. I think it's um, obviously he knows. Like, look, I start a YouTube channel. We stick on AdSense, and we'll start making so much crazy amounts of revenue, which they don't mm. necessarily need, but like. They can do it. Can we have fun with this? Can we have a bit of crack? Can we just kind of lighten up? I don't know. It seems to be they're having like, they're having a good time. No doubt yeah. about it. Um, I think, you know, we'll see. Could, could we see Cristiano Ronaldo breaks in future? Wow. Is that where he's going? Is he going Christ- to go on, yeah, on Fanatics Live? Junior breaks. There you go. Wow. But I suppose that is the thing. Like, if you have one of the biggest superstars in the world, and obviously the biggest footballing superstars in the world, yeah, creating content, that's mm. one step away from opening a box of cards. That's right. If he's making YouTube videos. Yeah, here, here, Ronaldo, here is an eminence from 2018 and yeah. it has some on card autos of you in it, maybe. Why don't you open that and have a bit of crack? Yeah, it costs $200,000. I know, yeah, that's true. And he'd be in there. And the re- if, if there was a live reaction of like a stream, they'd be going crazy if it was messy because that's a big hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'd love it. But yeah, no, it's a bit um, mad. Yeah, I did see that. I haven't paid too much attention to it, but it seems Cristiano Ronaldo is you know, a nice little business move there, a nice business move for himself. Yes. Branding. Branding himself more, taking thinking about life branding. beyond football, definitely. Which, if anything, is a bit scary. Mm. Or did he think the Piers Morgan thing went so well that uh, I don't think the Piers Morgan thing went well. No, neither do I. I said, does he think? Does he, does he think? think oh, I see what you're saying. So well, yes. he said, you know what? That interview mm. did big things. Why don't I just do it all the time? It's it's bizarre. I mean, it, you know what? I feel like it's one of those things, Jason. This is what I'll say: is like. One of the kind of good things about Messi, Ronaldo, and like these kind of superstar athletes, I, I like to think is that you have limited visibility of them. That's the best thing about them, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, Muhammad Ali, an amazing, and obviously you've seen him everywhere as well, but it's like, if Ronaldo's uploading weekly, do people yeah. start going, this guy? I know, yeah. It's hard to know. Well, you kind of can't do both. Like, you can't, like, it's almost an admission. If you have time to run a YouTube channel, it's almost an admission that you're, what you're doing in Saudi Arabia is like... Don't mind that. I'm, I'm picturing him retired. I'm picturing him retired. Right? Oh, him retired. But he's retired. He needs, he needs a gig and he isn't going to sit in Sky Sports Studio. Talking to the boy. Yeah. It's bizarre. But I suppose this is, I suppose from his point of view, there's more dignity in having your own YouTube channel than becoming a pundit and talking to all those other pundits. Mm. Who knows? Listen, we'll wait and see. But I do think it's almost removed. Experience, there's no dignity in having a YouTube channel. That's right. <laughs> Not my subscriber base, Jason. No, that's small. right. 
Four points. Um, four point eight five million. Like he's breaking records, which in fairness is a good thing for soccer in general. That it's like one of the fastest ever growing YouTube channels ever is a soccer player. How big is he? Like, let me see Steph Curry start a YouTube channel and let's yeah. have a look at Ronaldo's prices versus Steph Curry's prices and their YouTube figures after a week. Mm. There you go. Um, and then let's try and take some of that. Those YouTube subscribers get to buy cards, start That's catching right. up on Steph's. Uh, if we could turn those Ronaldo fanatics into collectors. Wow, incredible be, uh, stuff. That's right. But yeah, I don't really know what it does or doesn't do. Um, apart from it's, it's interesting and it is making a lot of noise globally because it is so big it's funny because he's had an instagram he's had a facebook he's had a twitter so it's like what's what's yeah, the difference what's it gonna be like they're all no. becoming the same platform anyway with the short form content that's right um we've had a big week for on card autographs and in 2015-16 pretty sele- uh, flawless sorry i don't know why i said flag uh flawless uh finishes off 15 messy went for twenty thousand seven hundred dollars that's one of my favorite images of, of Leo Messi from Flawless. That's a it's unbelievable. A um, if I do, if anyone's listening from Fanatics Collect, uh, give me a little uh, click to enlarge button here, please. I'm thinking <laughs> it's not enlarging. Um, that's that technology exists. eBay have it. Golden have it. Get on it. Um, this one, this uh, obviously completely different situation to the Ronaldo. But would you say reflected in the price? Not necessarily. Ronaldo's price looks very good compared to this. Uh, yeah, I think international ink looks, looks terrible as, as like an insert. True. Oh, it really doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, but obviously, a 101, 101 international ink uh, yeah. from it's obviously Prism. a PSA nine. He won that World Cup, so like, yeah, you're you're surprised of that price. But like, do you think Ken is sitting there going, if you put that on my elite auction, you're not getting fifty four thousand. You're getting a bit more. Like, I think that, that's at play for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people have always said certain cards work on PWCC, certain cards work on Golden, and it is a different mm. vibe. But um, interesting to look at that. Here's a 2018. Um, this again is 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 in, this a PSA 10? Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Gold power from 2018, 37,200. Um, it's pop two. And this oh. is one of five. It's pop two. Um, and this is an incredible card. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, this is a 2022 immaculate PSA eight for nine thousand one hundred and fifty. This is like a laundry tag autograph one one, not on card. Isn't um, it bizarre? That for some reason Panini kind of reserved the laundry tag for one on ones, like it was super desirable. Like it really isn't. That's their logo, I mean, like, man. Yeah, but why? Yeah, I don't know. I've never understood I have no that. Idea. Um, and then this is probably the 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 coolest card I think. Um, just in terms of novelty, uh, in this lot, there's a lot of three 2018 Panini Eminence Crown Jewels. It's Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, and Ronaldo Nazario. And this to me for this lot is is cheap eight thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars and for these three cards i know they're raw i know it's whatever but i think that's such a cool collection of cards if you call it's probably about right price yeah that's what i mean yeah i'm just saying it's it's cool cool. yeah i Um, wish you could enlarge that jason i really wish i could enlarge that but unfortunately they just don't have that enlarged but um so let's see if i zoom in on the page okay yeah that's fine a bit better a bit better um but these are very cool. Um, and it'd be interesting to see. We've seen some of Ronaldinho's uh, Dynasty Ronaldo's cards. amazing, by the way. Um, this Ronaldo That's Ronaldo here. with the haircut, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, with the, with the front haircut, yeah. Um, so, very cool stuff. 9, 10, 11. Uh, they're, they're kit numbers. Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho. Um, cool stuff. I like it. Yep. Um, so that is just some little cards there on on Fanatics, uh, little big cards on Fanatics Collect, just to to mention. Um, Enzo, before we finish up, did you uh, watch any football this weekend? And do you have any observations from that? Yeah, I caught a small bit of the Barcelona game. Obviously got to see Yamal score that beautiful deflected arranging goal. I got to watch most... I got to watch most of the Real Madrid game and I got to watch all of the United game. I think that's all that yeah. I may have caught I, yeah i missed the city game harlan got a hat trick um yeah. for anyone who didn't see the real madrid game it was mbappe's uh debut at the bernabeu yes uh, didn't score actually played quite poorly i thought yeah there's a lot of work to be done at real madrid for that front three of rodrigo yeah. um vinny and mbappe vinny and mbappe obviously bellingham was out injured with a, i don't know if you've seen that jason with a he injured a muscle that not a lot of people have they said and people said the pure on the fucking muscle <laughs> what is going on 
be he injured. Muscle, he wouldn't even be able to injure this muscle. That's what they said. Yeah, that's right. But he's yeah. injured too, so he'll be back in a few weeks. Yeah, um, Artiguler came in. Good news for yeah, he twenty twenty three marathon holder. I think obviously Endrick got his goal, took it very very well. Um, exciting. Yes, Endrick scored in the ninety fifth, ninety sixth minute and came on. I, can I just say one thing about Endrick? I don't know if you're watching this on the same uh, La Liga TV stream that I was watching it on Enzo, but the commentators were saying Andrick, and so was the stadium. Yeah, Andrick. Andrick. Andrick, yeah, it was, it wasn't yeah, so Andrick as we say they're, it. Yeah, they're taking the E and the N, they're called the On instead of N. Yeah. Um, fine. That's an interesting Andrick. one to see. We, start doing that, that. Jason. we shouldn't have even said that on, we should have just started using it and let people catch up. And appear to be very, very, so the Andrick, the very culture. The Andrick kaboom did big numbers recently. Yeah. Um, like, what do you think? Yeah, so Andrick, obviously, I'm going to start calling him Andrick. <laughs> Andrick, because um, I did hear that. Andrick, like, at the end, of the day, he came on, like, the 88th minute and got a goal, which Mbappe struggled to do over, you know, 87 yes. minutes. So, great finish. You know, good start for him. It's, it's that thing of, like, I said to my brother, I was like, what happens to, or maybe I said it to you, I don't know, I said it to someone. Someone does this thing. Maybe I said it to no one. What happens if Mbappe finishes the season with, you know, nine goals? Which is yes. not, like, people are like, that's impossible. But it's like, I, I don't clip this and bring it back to me. I don't, I don't want abuse here. But what I'm saying is, Remember that fellow that said Haaland would be terrible and they kept being show and everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. Okay, oh, no. And he broke the Premier League goal scoring record. But what I'm saying is like, if, if Mbappe just doesn't hit the ground runner, what happens? Yeah. So everything suggests he will, but at the moment, the only thing that doesn't suggest he will is like, you can't have him and Vinny in the same lineup at the moment. It doesn't look right. Mm. They both want to be on the left and it's a bit confusing. So it's like, yeah, there is a world where Andre outscores him in his first season. I don't think that's an inc- a crazy thing to suggest as a possibility. Yeah. Especially well, with, I think, with how he took that goal. Um, obviously, so Carlo Don Carlo has said that uh, that Mbappe is going to play as a nine, and I do. I look, I do think Mbappe wants to play on the left, but I think we've seen over the last year, or maybe more, that Mbappe's pace maybe isn't what it was, um, and that he's starting to. And we see we saw this with Cristiano as well. He's starting to lose that pace, starting to lose those first few yards. Um, and yeah, we, we didn't see it. And playing close to the goal, twenty-four, twenty-five. No, I know, but this is like potentially a big drop off. That's um, what I'm saying. Maybe it's more like Wayne Rooney, uh, <laughs> where the, the legs start to be very, very heavy. Michael Owen, yeah. Um, His was so he's going to have to learn to play close to the goal because he's not able, it looks like, to run at lightning speed up and down the pitch for 90 minutes. Um, and if he's going to play close to the goal, he needs to finish. Chances. That's right. For, um, for us, like, it's not it's not panic stations yet, but it's pay very close attention. Obviously, it's a different vibe. When you're playing for Real Madrid, you're almost always going to be against a low block. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's no real time or space to run in behind people. We've seen Mbappe with incredible finishes. World Cup final, that finish was one of the best I've ever yep. seen in that moment, in that, you know, pressure or whatever. Um, so we, it should be fine. Champions League, again, where more more eyes are on them, more competitive games, there will be more space. Yeah. Um, so we can still see some blockbuster stuff there. But it is, it's not a certainty. It's still that kind of unknown. How is he going to settle? Um, and Andrik looks to have the kind of vitality of youth and just looks like... Could he just be a player similar to like a Suarez or whatever? That's just anytime the Aguero, anytime he shoots, he scores. Because like the mm. level of composure and kind of accuracy of the first goal is exciting. Yeah. Like I look at that and I, that was a bit different to what I see other players doing. It's obviously young, early days. We just learned that as his name. So yeah. we're not going to get too excited. But I'll be watching the Real Madrid games very, 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 very closely for the next uh, few weeks, I think. Mm. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, just to uh, shout out a couple of uh, rookies from past years, uh, João Pedro scored a 95th minute winner against Manchester United to get the win for Brighton and was very, very bright throughout the, uh, throughout the game. Uh, Antonio Nusa, who I believe only has 100 uh, rookie autographs. I've seen that. It's some insert number to 100 that he only, that's all he has. Um, he moved from uh, Club Bruges to Orby Leipzig and scored uh, the winner in a 1-0 a victory for them at the weekend in the Bundesliga. Jamie Bino Gittens got a couple of goals for Dortmund, and he's now just called Jamie Gittens. He's not called wow. Jamie Bino Gittens. Um, I heard that on a podcast. He's consulted with his family, and they've settled on a uh, Jamie Gittens. He's dropped the Bino. It's cleaner. Wow. Um, so that'll be an interesting one because obviously his rookie cards all say Jamie Bino Gittens. That's right. Similar um, to Sav- you see Savio. Is he going by Savino now? He's going by Savino. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, so People just... don't know. I, I hit a Savio. Look at this. Look at this Savio, Jason. You're going to love it. A rookie number to 25. 
from Finest Flashbacks, one of only two sets, I believe, with any rookie cards. Yeah, in, in without it. he's called Savino, I'm, I'm going to be here trying to sell this, and I'll be going, no, no, this fella, this is Savino. Yeah, he plays, you. From, plays from, you know, Man City, you know, you know. Um, you're going to be telling people the City Football Group. That's right. Yeah, he was at, he was at your own, it's the same. Well, actually, he was at Trois, but it doesn't, anyway. Um, so we will see what happens uh, there. Uh, Julian Alvarez uh, made his debut for Atletico Madrid, and... Um, Brighton parts, but still trying to click with a uh, uh, Antoine Griezmann. But that's very exciting for those of us of an Atletico uh, persuasion. Florian um, Vert's got a late winner to continue the kind of Bar Leverkusen where they left off last season, continuing yeah. again. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff going on um, in Leverkusen. Um, although like, Leverkusen fans have assured us that they have enough bad karma, enough bad stuff has happened to them through the years that they could go unbeaten for three years and it wouldn't make up for all the things they've missed out on. That's right. Oh. That's what they say. That's what they the, say. Um, basically, football is back, baby. Yeah. Let's go. It's been oh, do you know who we have to give a shout out to? Tell me. Chelsea, who won 6-2 uh, at Molyneux. <laughs> they um, and Noni Madweke scored a hat-trick and I had a right. little look at uh, eBay and his cards, the sales volume was crazy compared to Haaland's hat trick, where the sales volume didn't shift many given day. Really, couldn't couldn't shift it. Cole Palmer got a goal and three assists, I believe. So he is yes. also off the ground. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, good. It was good. Joe Felix scored. Nicholas Jackson scored. Uh, La Liga select uh, rookie for Villarreal a couple of years ago. And Noni Manueke scored a hat trick after insulting the city of Wolverhampton. I just wanted to say That's we've right. been to Wolverhampton. There's nothing to insult. That's right. The pies perfectly are nice people. No, it was Wolves where they, 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 they said we had to reserve our hot dogs or the hot dogs were reserved. Was that Wolves? Definitely Wolves. They Birmingham. did say the hot dogs yeah. were reserved in Birmingham. Birmingham. So, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I agree with Noni Madueke. Right, okay. So they are. They deserved everything they got. That's yeah, what we're saying. They, they had enough bad karma that they deserved to get slapped. Well, put it this way. Pedro Neto, who just moved from Wolves to Chelsea, uh, joined in the celebrations almost immediately. So he obviously doesn't share a high opinion of Wolverhampton either. Maybe he had a hot dog reserved. Yeah, they sold it off Mundro. That's right. That's what those. There was two of them sitting there. They said, oh, that's reserved. Reserved for the staff, no doubt. And we're yeah. going to eat them. Like, fuck off. A reserved hot dog. I was starving. <laughs> but but Birmingham, God bless them, when they got relegated that year, they they looked after us with some really good pies. That's right. So, that was Birmingham City, yes. Wolverhampton Wanderers, no. Yeah, no. That's, if anyone's uh, mapping out our opinions on various football clubs, put those yeah, if you're, yeah, if in, you're in that area, area, go to Birmingham. Are they in yeah. the same area? Am I wrong? Am I wrong in saying that? They're absolutely in the same area, yes. Yeah, making sure. Our trips are all blurring together, Jason. We've been... I know, yeah. We've been around um, a Anyway, right. So that's um, that's it for this edition, uh, 236 of Soccer Courage United. As I say, pay close attention to the Dublin Card Show channels over the next uh, couple of days. Big news it coming. is coming, people. Um, and other than that, we're back on uh, Thursday. Thursday, go on. Happy to be back. Okay. Bye-bye. See you, Jason. 